This is Llanthoen Beach, which is part of Newborough on Anglesey. And here we've got some really unique types of rocks. These are actually pillar lavas. So they're a type of rock called basalt. And they would have been erupted onto the seafloor deep, deep beneath the ocean. And they're actually dated as late Precambrian, so that they're really ancient rocks, you know, around about 600 million years from, from what I understand. Um, and what's special about these is they come from an ocean that no longer exists. So as I say, they, they come from, they erupted onto the deep ocean. Well, that ocean's no, no longer here. It would have existed to the northwest of, of where we are now, so up in, up in this direction, where we now have Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland wasn't wasn't there, or most of Northern Ireland. That was actually on the other side of this ancient ocean, and that ocean's completely disappeared now. We've got Northern Ireland next to Wales and Anglesey. This is one of the last remaining traces of that ancient ocean. That would have been caught up in the collision between continents when that ocean was closing. So we're going to see what else we can find on this really special geological part of Anglesey. vertically see these lines running across the rock. So these in fact are sedimentary rocks. So some evidence here that although we, a lot of this area is made up of these pillar lovers and volcanic rocks, we've got other things going on. So in between these volcanic rocks erupting we would have had sediments being laid down much more more gently under the uh, under the ocean here. Bedded rocks again. So this is actually a big, big chunk of limestone, big block, a couple of meters across, in amongst the rest of these sediments that we've seen and that we know formed on the ocean floor. And what this is interpreted to represent is the material that's filled up an ocean trench. So ocean trenches, like, like the Marianas Trench, um, in, in which we have the challenge of deep, the deepest point on Earth, uh, around about seven miles deep. Um, in those form between two tectonic plates that are colliding. So where we had Anglesey on the edge of one tectonic plate and an ocean, another tectonic plate uh, adjacent to that, I told you in the, to the northwest of where Anglesey sits now, this ocean that's disappeared. When that ocean was closing, those plates were colliding and we would have had one of these trenches and that trench would have been filled up with these blocks. The only way that such big blocks could have been deposited there, blocks like this limestone here. And if we turn round under this lighthouse here, see we've got this pale coloured block, which is much, much bigger, maybe, maybe yes, several metres, seven or eight metres in height there. So that's one of these big blocks of limestones. And these blocks, they can actually get up to 100 metres, a couple of hundred metres, they're, they're known. To, to get that big. So pretty um, you know, huge deposits we got forming in, the, in this ancient ocean trench that would have been around in the, in the latest Precambrian. So 
to finish, just coming back to these nice pillar lathers that we started with, and you can see the the curvature of one of the, one of these individual pillows. So this would have been a blob of lava that came out onto this, this deep ocean floor. So these have ended up where they are, where they are here, up on land because of these um, unique tectonic sort of geological conditions that were taking place at this time in the late Precambrian, early early Cambrian. So as I mentioned at the last site, we had this ocean closing. We've got evidence for that in in the trench fill deposits. We have these big blocks of limestone that end up in these, this deep ocean trench. When the ocean closed, this uh, igneous rock that would have been at the bottom of this ocean got caught up in that collision and it ended up up on land as it is now. So usually these rocks on the ocean floor subduct, they, they get taken down beneath the overriding tectonic plate, beneath the crust and into the mantle and there's no trace of them again. But because of these unique conditions, this closure of an ocean, it would have ended up here. And if we take a closer look at this pillow, there's something else um, that there's a nice example of here. So you can see this red material I mentioned earlier. And um, this red material, so I mentioned it's due to the presence of iron that we have red, is that the material is actually called jasper. So it's this material which is uh, made up of silica. It's the, same, it's the same thing that makes quartz, it's silicon and oxygen combined together. The very, very fine grained, it's, it's called cryptocrystalline, so it doesn't form the crystals like you see in, in quartz. And there's a presence of iron in that silica, which, which makes it this, this red jasper. We've got some quartz, some of our quartz, this pale white and grey material here as well. So it's going to be coarser grains. Uh, and this would have been formed because these lavas were forming on the ocean floor. So there's an interaction of seawater with this very hot material that was coming up in the, in the ocean crust and precipitating minerals that we get in these conditions. These rocks that we've looked at today are part of what's known as the Guna group, which is um, this slice of rocks that, that covers the southeast part of the island of Anglesey. Um, they're, they're very unique rocks, so they're all associated with subduction and oceanic crust. So the pillow basalt being the oceanic crust, the sediments and the trench fill we talked about being associated with subdu subduction. And they're very unique as well because they're so old. So I've mentioned them being late Precambrian a few times. There are very few rocks in, in Britain at all that are Precambrian rocks, especially not south of Scotland. Um, like There are a few examples in Shropshire, Leicestershire, Herefordshire, uh, for example, of these latest Precambrian rocks. And they only ever cover very small areas, really, like when, once we get south of Scotland, like, like I mentioned. Um, so it's this unique period in Earth history that's only um, represented in a few places in Britain, really. So it's a very interesting place to come and study.